Hi, this video is about adding a uh, sub uh, subnet on your on your current uh, subnet. If you have uh, followed my vSphere project part one, I only created one subnet. Now, in most small companies to medium, they only created one subnet. Um, that will be a big problem later on if you add uh, a lot of services to your to your ne network, like for example ERP, and then you add the uh, 50 users. And what will happen there? You will have a lot of bottleneck on the traffic on the network. So the best way, the first thing we need to do is to create another subnet and put all that new subnet, put all the user here, and then later on. You can also uh, put another subnet, uh, subnet to put your application, say your ERP, because ERP is a very, um, you know, a very, um, very uh, lot of cap uh, transaction running on that one. It needs to be on another subnet so so as to ease up uh, over all the the network traffic. Um, this video is already. Um, I'm just showing the the configuration, but on another video I will create really. Um, how to create this one and with a with a with a regular router this one I'm using the DC one as the router so in that so in this case I have to put another NIC and I have to put the the address which is the last two octets 2.10 on the on the new subnet meaning on on this subnet we call this first subnet A in this we will call this one subnet B on the subnet B the gateway is this one the 2.10 but on subnet A our gateway is the 111.100 now um, I'm running the DHCP on the DC2 a domain controller which is not advisable or not recommended uh, especially in a large company or even a small one but they said if you will run uh, DC and DHP together it's better you go to the properties advanced and put the credentials here by default there's no credentials here and if you if you do that then 99.9% as uh, recommend as uh, um, Microsoft uh, inform us that it, it is uh, it will work 99.9% on my part too, I created just one scope for the subnet A, which is this one. It's working fine. Uh, let's see that on a client and let's log into this client. So let's see the IP address of this client, which is, uh, this is the subnet A. And it's being listed on that subnet A. That's the DC2, right? So let's put it on the subnet of subnet B and let's shut this down first. By the way, um, to be able to uh, to support your new subnet, um, you need to create a super scope. And super scro uh, scope, um, you need to create another, another subnet first for the subnet B, which is this one. And then when this is created, then you can create a super scope. And then when you cr when you're creating the super scope, you will just point to this one that this is a this is on another subnet. And also on the routing here, you need to create uh, the the last protocol, which is the DHCP, uh, DHCP relay agent. Now there's no more uh, protocol that you need to add. It is not listed anymore. So. But when you create that this one, it will just uh, ask you where do you need to put uh, where, where do you uh, where is your uh, DHCP, which is on the DC one. This is the I mean DC two. This is the DC two IP one o one, and on the inside of the DHCP relay agent, you're just pointing to the local area connection tree, and when you click here, you s will say create an another interface. Uh, we cannot another create create another interface. It's already there, and it will just prompt for the properties or this one, and this one you can uh, change the half or boot threshold, blah blah blah, to uh, to ch you can change this one, but I will not include the topic on on that one on this video. 
and since we're uh, doing uh, we're running a routing in, in remote access the the entry for the routing is uh, automatic unlike if we uh, put the, the routing on a real router then we need to add it on every server or especially the the, the domain controller but for now we will not add any routing because it's automatic so if you do a netstat and find that uh, subnet it will just point to the net mask and give you the information that this is the gateway okay, let's go back to my client and let's see the interface for the subnet B and subnet B interface is local area connection and local area connection is on this workstation is B bnet 3 so that's bnet 4 so let's change bnet 4 to bnet 3 and run it and let's see if it's going to give the DHCP properly let's log in my magic password which is 123 which is not advisable in a real production uh, network and let's see if it's going to have a new DHCP and it works and the DHCP is still DC2 but it's giving me the uh, 10.1.2 subnet so it's meaning it's my my super scope is working fine and say for example you're troubleshooting your DNS you see that your uh, DHCP is working you can ping uh, DC1 from here it's using that interface because it's near to that one uh, ping DC2 it will use the the subnet A or the IP address of 101 but if you want to ping also the uh, subnet A of uh, DC1.100 uh, you sh you're supposed to be able to, to route on that or ping on that one so meaning it's working fine or even yourself So this will conclude. Uh, watch out for my uh, next video on this. On this, uh, creating another subnet with a router. This one, my router is a, a domain controller, but on the other video, it will be a a router. I'll probably just use a Linksys router for now.